Hello, good evening to our lecturer, Madam Caroline. Before I begin, let me introduce about myself and my group member. My name is Maud Faidi Arifin, followed by Kairul Naim as the second presenter, followed by Saleh Mumin, Nurul Suhada, and Nuriana Musa. We are from group three, and for our topic that we have chosen is about the Malaysian National Security Council for Majlis Keselamatan Negara, MKN. Okay, first of all, let me introduce about the topic discussed. The Malaysian National Security Council, NSC, also known in Malay as Majlis Keselamatan Negara Malaysia, MKN, is a federal agency under the Prime Minister's department that is responsible for ensuring that sovereignty and national security are continuously safeguarded and maintained. They have a lot of change in terms of outside and inside issue of the management itself during the pandemic happened, whereby one of the most top issue that will change a lot in many fields is about the implementation of the movement control order, which is MCO, whereby all Malaysians were instructed primarily to stay indoors. Other restriction imposed included prohibition of mass gathering, health screening, and quarantine for Malaysian coming from abroad, restriction on foreigners entering the country and, and closure of all facilities except primary and essential service such as health service, water, electricity, telecommunication, and food supply. <clears throat> As example, this include movement restriction, social distancing, and banning of mass gathering. And on the other hand, until the declaration of the pandemic by the WHO on the 12th March 2020, many countries, including Malaysia, were managing the infection in a less aggressive manner. These countries had kept their borders open to visitors with a lack of screening at entry point and had left their doors with infected status to enter freely into the country. This in turn create a sense of insecurity among the public. As therefore, during the pandemic, all the orders of the government directive is implemented fully by the Malaysian National Security Council, NSC. Okay, next, it enables the countries to legisl legislate and enforce their national laws either in the form of public health laws, emergency laws, and biosecurity laws. Simultaneously, addressing the severity and urgency of the pandemic for the protection of human health. Therefore, there's a change regarding the issue whereby the Malaysian National Security Council, NSC, is responsible in carrying any common and other methods in order to control and to enforce any rules and regulation which has been met. Okay, the next content, I will pass to my group member to explain further about our topic discuss. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, my name is Kamal bin Omar. I'm going to present about the issue and challenges based on changes for Malaysia National, Malaysian National Security, which is MKN. So, Malaysia is a multiracial nation with a parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy, and it is a primary form of government. And the integrity of its people, a stable administration, territorial integrity, sover sovereignty, and worldwide acclaim are the cornerstones of the country. The government is in charge of uh, consistently preserving and guarding national security and, and sovereignty. So, Malaysia's uh, national security in this context refers to the absence of any internal or foreign danger to the to the communist uh, to the uh, for, foreign danger to its essential principles. 
So since 1975 and uh, 19, uh, 1957, which is uh, there have been numerous threats to national security, including the Communist Party of Malaya insurgency, the 2013 incursion of the terrorist army of the Sulus, Sultanate into Sabah, attempt to overthrow the government through undemocratic uh, means, militancy and terrorism, as well as uh, various global threats. This has made the creation of a comprehensive national security strategy necessary, which is a NSP. So, first of all, the issues and challenges for Malaysian national security based on the changes is uh, instability inside the nation. Uh, community conflict in Malaysia continue to be fueled by topics that uh, touch on race, religion, belief, and a culture, uh, and are fr uh, freely publicly discussed on the social media. So the nation desire to build a cohesive and progressive society is uh, nevertheless hampered by these problems. So secondly, is the issue and challenges are the democracy in the country, which is uh, there are initiatives and plans to add. Uh, the initiative and plans to overthrow the government using the under under democratic and democratic means that go against international law. So such act that endanger the safety of the country and the integrity of our national institutions. The thirdly, which is uh, another issue in challenges, is the illegal alliance and so-called uh, refugees. The country stability, prosperity, and uh, rapid economic progress have drawn large numbers of refugee and illegal immigrants to our bodies. In addition to having a detrimental effect on the social, economic, criminal, political, and diplomatic uh, spheres, and uh, the presence of uh, illegal immigrants and so-called refugees has the potential to endanger the peace and the security of the country. Uh, next is a faulty, which is uh, the territorial claims, conflict overlapping are uh, another issue and the challenges for the national, national security. So the Territory, uh, territorial claims and a conflict involving land, marine, airspace have plug, uh, plugged Malaysia with its, with its neighbors as well as major nations. These disagreements may have a negative effect on Malaysia's bilateral relation with its, with its neighbors. If not managed properly, conflicting uh, territorial claims at the regional level might rise the, possibi the possibility of an armed conflict with regional collateral effect effects and even encourage the involvement of interest parties. The fifthly, the issues and the challenges are the terrorism and extremism, which the international terrorism is a persistence menace that directly affects Malaysia's security on a worldwide scale. Extremist and terrorist elements that have infiltrated the nation, as well as Malaysian individuals taking part in a terrorist action both inside and outside of Malaysia, have the potential to cause unrest and uh, endanger the national tranquility. Cyber city is the six uh, of issues and challenges, which is uh, our dependence on technology has grown as a result of the introduction and quick growth of information and communication technology, which is ICT, which has raised the danger of cyber security threats. The risk of cyber attacks on the country's critical information infrastructure, measures of the internet, cyber espionage and other associated crimes has also grown due to the open, bodiless nature of cyberspace, simple availability and accessibility. Accessibility. A cyber security mishaps and assaults are on the rise right now and they are getting harder to foresee. So disaster are just uh, the seven issues and challenges. Malaysia is uh, vulnerable to both natural and natural and man-made catastrophes, including floods, Floods, uh, typhoons, storms, infectious disease, and epidemic outbreaks, earthquakes, tsunami, drought, uh, landslides, and smog. So disaster, this difficult situation, whether whether they arise inside our borders or outside, will have a negative influence on people's lives and interfere with uh, with the government's ability to function effectively. So the eighth is a uh, criticism nature is a uh, sus susceptible to many different crises, both at home and abroad, including social and economic upheavals and military welfare. These situations directly influence the populace, which has a negative impact on national security. A unrest unrestrained migration to the other nation, particularly Malaysia, can be caused by external crises. So, transnational crime is the ninth 
Uh, so Malaysia is uh, geographically vulnerable to transnational crimes like smuggling of such as of people, wildlife, jungle product, drugs, goods and arms, human trafficking, piracy, organized crime, cyber crime, money laundering, economic crimes and armed robbery at sea due to its positions along the South China Sea and the Straits of Malacca, which are sea lines of communication. The tenth is uh, infectious disease and pandemics. Uh, Malaysians are becoming more vulnerable to health issues due to the increase in affordable internal and global population movement. Whether the internal, uh, whether the internal or foreign pandemics and the spread of infectious illness can have a negative impact on the socio-economic stability of a country, such as COVID-19. As we can see, like uh, nowadays, COVID-19 is, is the disease uh, or illness that affected to our country and to the whole to the whole world also. If non-infectious ailments like hypertension, diabetes, kidney infection, heart disease, and the like are not treated, the country will eventually become bankrupt. So, the example of this infectious disease uh, pandemic, which is COVID-19 that we face uh, 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 right now, before and right now, maybe, uh, it affects our country's economy in terms of the uh, production, in terms of money, uh, and the people will affected in terms of their losing of their jobs, uh, some business may close down, and yeah, bankrupt. So, energy security is the level of issues and challenges in uh, national, uh, Malaysian national security. So, energy security is a concern for the global today. So, according to estimates, until alternative energy sources that are more affordable and cleaner are widely used, dependence of conventional fuel, fossil fuels will grow. However, the current rush for fossil fuels might lead to conflicts on a regional and global scales. So, for the food security, which is uh, the 12 issues and challenges, is, uh, food security is also essential to a country's survival. The increase in the global population has raised the need for food resources. Failure to effectively manage, ca manage current sources will result in a rivalry of a few sources and excessive reliance on outside suppliers. As a relation right now. So, last but not least, for the issues and challenges for MKN, which is a national uh, Malaysia national security, which is a programs for developing weapons and proliferating nuclear weapons, the country is further vulnerable to nuclear threats such as the use of nuclear weapon, the relaxation of restriction and pressure on nuclear projects, the development of WMD by state actors, particularly the major countries, and the danger of nuclear plant incidents. Uh, uh, accidents can all have devastating effects. This has negative effects on the ecosystem, marine life, and the health of the nearby population. The development of the WMDs uh, continues to pose of uh, a serious dangers to regional peace. So this is uh, the issues and challenges of the Malaysian national security that they are, they are facing. So that's all for me. Thank you very much. Pandemic COVID-19 is a huge impact on the entire human life as a disease endemic is spreading not only in the country and also infecting the world. In addressing the unprecedented health crisis, various initiatives by the government not only to ensure that the infection chain is resolved and that the survival of the people can continue. The first taken, the first step taken by the government is to implement the Movement Control Order, PKP, beginning on March 18, 2020. COVID-19 management is placed under the National Security Council, MKN, the Prime Minister Department, JPM, as the agency that manages national security. It appears to pose a new challenge in national security management that is no longer looking traditional. This health threats demand that the MKN remains relevant, effective, and efficient in the interest of the country and the well-being of the people. The role of MKN is still more challenging to manage pandemic COVID-19 crisis situation. This includes making the decision of the policy decision through a multi-party action 
an agreement in addressing the crisis. The decision was later translated into a plan of action in the field that the result of the impacted of the country effort in addressing the COVID-19 situation through human, financial, material, and asset that need to be more integrated so that the, they are utilized efficiently and effectively. All strategic planning and direction are formulated through the involvement of the entire ministry and agency and the government, also with the state government, to act in unison to find the best approach to deciding the COVID-19 matching. So the front line team is mobilized all out with a pool of energy, also with the health and safety personnel in the field. In addition uh, to MKN, uh, so the National Disaster Management Agency, NATMA, act as a coordinator to manage disaster relief in the country on a regular and effective basis, coordinating the operation and work of the state and regional disaster management secretariat, logistic management to meet the needs of the frontliner and the people. Indeed, uh, the various challenges faced by this team in managing the country over a 10 month period um, addressing to the COVID-19 outbreak. This includes establish a new web starting the first web in March 2020 today. The government has begun a campaign for the people to comply with the SOP until the government successful apply the COVID-19 infection grab become curb. A security agency under the JPM is also responsible for the Civil Defense Force, APM, although the assignment is less well known as the community. It is one of the key pillars of the Disaster Management Secretariat in addressing the pandemic COVID-19. In adopting the new norms of life, the government delivery system continued to operate as usual despite the reduced number of civil servants in office because the government delivery system is widely used online. Also, the Malaysia Administration and Management Planning Unit, MAMPU, is responsible for planning and leading the public sector digitalization agenda towards improving and modernizing the government service delivery system. End-to-end -end service, uh, E2E, is a service offered to the customer online that is accessible at any time and anywhere without face-to-face. -face. And the government is targeting 40% of the E2E service in the public sector by the end of 2020. So Public Sector Digitalization Strategic Unit, um, 2021 until 2025, was developed that will be the basic for the digitalization of public sector, once again, offer a world-class digital service to the people of G2C, business and industry community G2B, and civil servant G2E, easily and securely through a single gate. So, the COVID-19 era changed all aspects of life, including uh, the way uh, the civil servant and the government uh, manage the impact is huge and every citizen and civil servant is responsible for protecting the new norm by adopting hygiene practice, avoiding crowded places and changing the work landscape by working from home. Still, in this moment, still we do the same like what happened under last year. So it can be help uh, online officer will uh, deal with the outbreak even though they are still concise and agile to carry out their duty and responsibility. Thank you.
My name is Nurul Shohada and I will be presenting about the recommendation on the issues faced by MKN due to post-COVID. The first recommendation of MKN after COVID-19 has hit Malaysia is rethinking the roles of hospitals and other institutions as hubs. The COVID-19 pandemic's tremendous strain on hospitals should prompt a re-evaluation of whether people should turn to these facilities first when they are ill. Malaysians should receive their healthcare and the potential function of hospitals as centers of care are both raised by this observation. The patterns of care are undoubtedly shifting as a result of urgent care facilities and walk-in clinics at pharmacy chains. To address the so-called social determinants of health, clinical care must be integrated with social services, housing, and other non-clinical services. That is important to acknowledge that certain institutions may occasionally provide better treatment than others. The second recommendation is by expanding the telehealth. It comes as no surprise that telehealth has been on the rise over the past few years due to COVID outbreak and is being incorporated into many different health plans. Businesses, particularly larger employers, have been rapidly expanding the use of telehealth in their coverage in an effort to improve worker convenience and save costs. Some systems have been using it regularly for years. Telehealth has been also slowly started to be used in obstetrics care, usually in rural areas, but also in some urban locations where some pregnant women, such as some immigrants, may be less willing or able to visit medical facilities. Medicare covered telehealth in many additional venues, at least temporarily in March, which was a significant step towards lowering the payment barrier. As for the third recommendation is by braiding and blending of the public funds. At all governmental levels, the public sector finances are compartmentalized. Programs and departments each have their own policies and processes. Cross-departmental planning is uncommon and data systems are frequently frustratingly incompatible. However, the severity of COVID-19 outbreak is requiring jurisdiction all around the nation to become more flexible so that various authorities can collaborate to ensure that monies are moved and coordinated governors, county executives and mayors are reducing administrative roadblocks. After the COVID-19 pandemic is finished, the government shouldn't return to its previous bureaucratic routine. Budgeting needs to be flexible and agencies need to work together in order to address the nation's health-related issues such as the opiate crisis, homelessness, and the difficulties of aging. Thank you. So, move to the conclusion. All the changes, type changes are uh, involved. For example, strategic transformational changes. Um, even the changes are not trans- transformational, they all have impact on certain area. For example, before this, uh, the National Security Council, MKN, have more focus on general welfare. But um, during pandemic, they have more focus how to overcome the pandemic issues. Uh, next is remedial changes. Kind of adjustment in the issue, for example, a uh, book from home and other issues such as implement the SOP. So what we can say, National Security Council uh, made the changes to had their own initiative to addressing uh, ways to solve the problem and challenges during pandemic. That's all for our presentations. Thanks for watching.